June is coming, and we're about to witness a historic moment as the first giant rocket is set to land successfully. Yes, I'm talking about SpaceX's Starship. Clearly, this event will be a milestone that propels SpaceX to new heights. But it goes beyond that. As NASA officials have declared, Starship Launch 4 is more important than you think. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. 212 days from Flight 1 to Flight 2, 117 days from Flight 2 to Flight 3, and only about 83 days from Flight 3 to 4 if the launch takes place as scheduled on June 5th. But even if Flight 4 hasn't happened yet or might be delayed by a couple days, we can see the time intervals are rapidly decreasing. This indeed further demonstrates SpaceX's relentless efforts and development in their project, as well as the noble mission to the moon entrusted by NASA. That's why there's nothing that can make NASA worried about SpaceX. They've even shown many times the importance and role of SpaceX's Starship for future missions beyond what we think. Recently, NASA's Administrator Bill Nelson spoke before a Senate Appropriations Committee hearing saying, Artemis III, if you compare it to the Apollo program, is a combination of Apollo 9, 10, and 11, which was the landing on the moon. If we were true space enthusiasts, surely no one would be unfamiliar with the Apollo missions. Among them, Apollo 9 tested rendezvous, docking, and pilot operation of the lunar module in Earth orbit. Apollo 10 tested the lunar landing and returned to the command module using the lunar module. And Apollo 11 tested the landing and return from the surface of the moon. It's like testing the movement, takeoff, landing, and flying a new airplane around the field and then putting it in service. Artemis 3 will include all those tasks. Given the new trajectory and complexity of the lunar mission, the prominence of the gigantic Starship spacecraft cannot be overlooked. Nelson emphasized, uh, And so it is a difficult task, and if we land, it is dependent on SpaceX having their lander ready. Now, they have hit all of their milestones, and in a couple of weeks, they're going to launch that huge rocket that has 33 Raptor engines in its tail, uh, and they're going to do uh, more uh, showing the space worthiness of it. It is uh, my hope that SpaceX will be ready with their lander. Artemis 3 is currently scheduled for September 2026, a timeline that is neither too distant nor too near. According to NASA, this is the most suitable time for SpaceX Starship to be fully prepared. We should not interpret this as NASA doubting SpaceX's capabilities or underestimating its ability to meet the earlier deadline. Let's think realistically. The extended time frame acts as a bonus for SpaceX. They will have the opportunity to conduct hundreds of tests and dozens of launches, build launch towers, and evaluate their entire production and launch operation systems. It would be fantastic if everything could be perfected. But as Nelson also mentioned, what SpaceX needs now are milestones. The most immediate milestone is the four Starship test flight, which SpaceX has planned for next week. Although they haven't received an FAA license for the launch yet, they announced on May 28th that Flight 3 did not cause any public safety incidents. This ensures that June 5th is still a viable launch date. The first day we get that license, we're going to fly, said SpaceX's Starbase General Manager Kathy Luters on May 14th. Currently, Starship is once again showing its magnificent stack configuration. It just completed its second wet dress rehearsal, incorporating the water deluge system test on May 28th. Some might wonder why SpaceX needed that second wet dress rehearsal. Well, this is perhaps an exam test when after the first wet dress rehearsal, Starship 29 was lifted off from Super Heavy 11 for inspection. Clearly, ensuring the spacecraft operates normally for the next launch is not an unnecessary measure. What are your thoughts? What else might SpaceX be testing? Comment down below and let us know. Okay, the four Starship flight needs to be meticulously checked with no room for errors during the launch. The primary goal of this launch is for both stages to return to Earth at designated locations. This is not only crucial for the Starship program, but also is a key factor that NASA depends on if they aim to send their astronauts to the moon by the end of this decade. If the fourth flight is successful, as expected, it'll be a significant boost for SpaceX and NASA, even solidifying America's leading position in the modern space race. Starship is humanity's best hope for cheap space access, estimated at $2 million bucks a launch, chiefly because both stages are reusable. Imagine affordable trips to the moon where even ordinary citizens could travel to other planets. 
This represents an expansion of opportunities for space exploration, moving towards a future where humanity will dominate the universe. Therefore, initially, SpaceX planned to start the recovery stages with a Mechazilla arms equipped on the launch tower, a novel and undoubtedly challenging process. In reality, it might take some time to recover the Super Heavy booster successfully, and longer for the upper stage of the Starship, which endures particularly harsh conditions during re-entry. Conditions never before tested on this scale. However, this does not mean it takes that long. If the fourth flight lands successfully, they could catch Super Heavy on the very next flight. Here's why this is feasible, and why that task might be easier than it looks. First, they've done this before with Falcon 9. SpaceX has successfully landed Falcon 9 boosters multiple times. They have a strong foundation in vertical landing technology, having perfected the technique several launches before achieving consistent success. SpaceX had perfected Falcon 9 landings three or four rockets before the first success, except the landing legs kept collapsing or not locking properly, an issue that does not apply to Super Heavy, which uses a different mechanism. Second, size and stability. Larger objects are easier to control in these scenarios. Landing a Falcon 9 and landing a Super Heavy booster are similar tasks from a software point. However, as the size increases, the process gets slower and more manageable. Thus, landing the larger Super Heavy is easier compared to the smaller Falcon 9. Besides, Super Heavy can hover unlike Falcon 9, which relies on a suicide burn to land. This hover capability simplifies the landing process, as it allows for more controlled and precise maneuvers. Finally, people seem to think that the actual moment of the catch is going to be hard. Not so. The Royal Navy did catches of Harrier jump jets in heavy seas. There, both the airplane and the hook were moving in three dimensions. The whole process was under human control. Everything happens much faster with a 7 or 8 ton jump jet than with a 200 ton booster approaching a fixed set of chopsticks. Catching Starship will be slightly more complex than Super Heavy due to the dynamics involved. Starship performs a flip maneuver and has to hover just before landing. This maneuver requires it to move away from the tower, flip, and then moves towards the tower again to hover and land. This process exposes the tower to more exhaust and is more susceptible to wind gusts. However, even landing partial reuse Starship has enormous potential. For example, if used simply as a disposable vehicle, it could launch 250 to 300 tons into orbit, more than twice as much as its closest rival, the SLS. More than anything, SpaceX wants to place a propellant storage depot in low Earth orbit LEO to refuel outward starships. In order to carry the maximum load, approximately 200 tons, a version 2 starship will normally expend all its propellant to reach LEO and then refuel at the propellant depot, allowing it to send that payload far beyond Earth orbit. As Robert H. Heinlein once said, when you reach orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. The propellant depot used for this refueling process will likely resemble Starship, except with larger propellant tanks to increase its refueling capability. No doubt SpaceX plans to use this propellant depot in orbit, hence it won't need to survive re-entry or be caught by the Mechazilla to operate normally. After each refueling operation, SpaceX plans to replenish the propellant depot using tanker vehicles, a simplified version of Starship's payload section to decrease its dry mass. Hence, if Starship was partially or fully expended, each tanker flight could carry at least 250 tons of fuel to orbit. In real terms, that means it should take only four tanker flights to refuel a lunar Starship, which requires around 983 tons of propellant, or three tanker flights to refuel a Mars Starship, which requires about 660 tons of propellant due to an assist from atmospheric braking. Admittedly, these tanker vehicles would need to be disposed of after each flight, but considering their simplicity and relatively low cost, a Raptor engine is under a million dollars to produce, this should allow orbital refueling to occur fairly regularly as SpaceX aims to make up one starship per day. Once orbital refueling is available, this should allow NASA to commence moon landings with their Artemis program. They intend to use Starship as a human landing system to send astronauts and cargo to the lunar surface every two years. And not only can we go to the moon, but we can also explore other planets like Mars and even settle there as Elon Musk's ambition. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.